Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk, just going to talk to you. You may find that you, as well as feeling relaxed, you may find that you get a little bit bored. And you may drift off to sleep. And that's kind of quite normal. (laughs) I think for a lot of people that listen to my recordings. There's often an element of boredom. Involved, but that's okay because if you're wanting to go to sleep or relax deeply, you don't want anything too high energy, I guess. And I'm definitely not known for high energy. Definitely not. So I thought I'd talk to you about what I, how I like to relax. It's something that I've been doing for a long time even when I didn't realize that's what I was doing. That might sound a bit strange, but let me explain. When I was a kid, when I was quite young, I used to lay down on my bed listening to a cassette tape, let's say the best of madness or the best of the monkeys. There were a couple of albums that I had on tape. Sometimes I would just lay down with nothing and I wasn't laying down to go to sleep. I was just laying down because I felt that's what I needed to do. I couldn't, I guess I couldn't really explain it back then. I didn't know anything about relaxation or hypnosis or meditation or anything like that back then. And this was, this is before I even started doing karate. So, you know, I didn't, didn't really have any, you know, I learned a little bit about meditation when I studied the martial arts by, by, you know, buying books and seeing how there was a connection between the martial arts and the monasteries in the old days and meditation and Buddhism and Taoism and stuff. Anyway, what I used to find happened, I just lay down and my body would instantly relax.
and my mind would slow down. Now, I wouldn't have worded it that way back then. All I know is that the the uncomfortable feelings I had in my body stopped feeling uncomfortable. And there was a release and it felt nice. And I just felt calmer. And then I started to notice that there were times when by being alone, I was able to really let go of some of those unpleasant feelings I'd have physically, maybe emotionally, when I was around people that perhaps I didn't want to be around. So even just at, at lunchtime when I was at school, there were times when I'd just walk around the field, you know, during the summer or during the fairly nice weather. I'd walk around the field on my own, very slowly. Sometimes I'd just be quiet, sometimes I'd sing some songs. So I was doing that at the age of nine and ten. I didn't realize I was doing walking meditation. I had no idea what walking meditation was until I was about 32. But I felt better afterwards. I felt as if the I always seem to have, I, I felt like I used to really have a build up of tension and stuff and this used to get rid of it. Now I can verbalise it now, back then I couldn't verbalise it. I just, I don't know about intuitively but I knew that it helped me so I kept doing it. At the age of nine, I used to walk home really, really slowly so that by the time I just got to the end of the road from where the school was, all the other students had passed and I just walked on my own very slowly home and the half hour walk would take about to over an hour maybe an hour and a half sometimes. No one could understand why it took so long or how physically I could walk so slowly. But I did it because it felt good to have that space to just feel the ground underneath my feet. to feel the movement of my body and to not be distracted by another person because when I'm with other people I'm pretty chatty yet I'm very happy to spend time on my own and to be silent. Although sometimes I'm chatty when I'm on my own, but, you know, we won't go into that because that's strange. <laughs> but I noticed from a very early age that 
taking some time away from people, from just whatever it was that I was doing, really helped. Now at the time, I liked school when I was up to the age of 10, between 9 and 10, I liked going to school. It was okay. It was fun. It wasn't difficult. You know, there was no pressure really. Um, yeah, it was fun. But I used to find that things would get on top of me. And I didn't understand why. It's almost like I was absorbing this energy and I needed to let it go and for some reason I was holding on to it for too long sometimes and then then I found a way to let it go and it did when I was walking noticing the ground underneath my feet noticing the wind blowing against my face Perhaps the sunshine shining on me, the sounds of the traffic around, the sounds of the birds, maybe the smells of some of the houses because as I were cooking their dinner, because <laughs> I was walking so slowly some people had already started their evening meal before I even got home and it smelled lovely and you know, those different smells and sometimes my mind would be just completely almost empty as I just walked. Other times I'd daydream. But when I arrived home I felt as though I had released whatever tension I had inside me was gone and I was relaxed. And it felt nice. And I suppose this is something that I learned quite early on. I don't know how I came about learning it, how I came about even, you know, testing it to see if it worked. Or there wasn't even that much thinking involved. I just naturally did it. And then as I got older, I would again lay down on my bed, just lay there on my back, just noticing my hands. I suppose the first thing I'd notice was maybe my feet, because I just took my shoes off, noticing, you know, the I suppose I used, to have, I used to have my laces up a bit too tight sometimes. So I'd notice the, uh, the circulation returning to my feet. Noticing my body being supported by the bed. And it was a real a real sense of, I guess like emptying, emptying a bucket of dirty water, just, you know, getting rid of it. It was almost cleansing, like having a shower or something like that, but It 
it felt nice. And sometimes I would just fall asleep. Other times I would drift. And as you do, you know, you drift and maybe you get to the point where you are kind of asleep. And then something brings you back and you're awake again. But the more often that happens, the more you drift. And the deeper you go each time. To the point where you just fall asleep. And that's it. Other times I just I'd almost kind of be halfway between being awake and being asleep. I was aware of my surroundings, but I didn't care about anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing really mattered. Because I used to be a... A bit of a warrior. It was nice to be able to just... Let that stuff... Go. Even then, I knew logically there was probably little point in worrying. And it was nice to, I guess, wake up every day starting new and fresh. Which I think is useful for all of us to do. You know, just let go of yesterday when we go to sleep. Just let it go. Enjoy your sleep and when you wake up, feel fresh. Fresh and calm and new. A new day. New hopes, new opportunities, new chances to behave in a way that you want to behave. And to live your life the way that you want to do. So I guess, you know, it's the whole... The old saying I say is every, every moment you choose what you do next. And there's a lot of truth in that. And there was times when I was at school when I'd be very boisterous and I'd be playing and you know having a lot of fun during the break time when I was in high school but I'd go through periods when I just couldn't be around anyone just couldn't face being around people so what I would do is I would if I had a packed lunch, I'd just take it. Uh, sometimes I'd eat it outside just so I got a bit of fresh air. And then I'd go upstairs. And I knew a place where I could be. It was like the back stairs to, to the classroom. It's almost like a fire escape really, but it wasn't. It, it was, but it was just a back stairs. And I used to sit there and read. I went through a period when I was reading Star Trek books, you know, like the original Star Trek series, but these were books based upon the series, and I, I read a lot of them. 
and my friends would look for me. Sometimes they'd find me and they'd sit down and I didn't want them to be there, but at the same time didn't want to be rude. And other times sitting on a beach, staring out at the sea. That's another thing I used to do to to really relax, to really let go. And I used to find that the wind blowing in my face and in my body, I felt as if the wind was just blowing through my head into my brain and just blown away any of the stress or any, un, you know, anything that's not useful, any limitations. It actually felt to me as if there was some kind of healing going on. I always, from a very early age, classed the weather as being just so powerful, especially the sea and the wind. And because I lived near the beach when I was uh, a teenager, I used to go to the beach and sit down there on the promenade, on the edge of the prom, or maybe sit on one of the deck chair things and I just look at the sea. And it was very hypnotic, very vast, and quite often, unless there were ships in a distance, I could just look and see nothing. It was literally there was there was no end to my vision. It just was endless. And of course the sound of the sea the smell of the sea and for something that powerful Yet, you know, so close yet, not really anywhere near me. I could just sit on a chair and it was there. Almost it was like it was there to entertain me. Of course it wasn't. But I felt, I felt part of the sea. I felt almost at one with this huge hugely powerful force of nature. And this seemed to be, even when the sea was really wavy and it was, you know, it's a really windy day, I, was, I felt a sense of connection because the sea reminded me of my mind, sometimes completely frantic, huge waves all over the place, and other times really calm. I think I, there's something about that knowing that the sea would always end up being calm again, no matter what happened previous, it'll always end up being calm at some point, just like our minds, no matter how wavy, you know, they get, how much, how much activity is going on, eventually our minds can be calm again. That power, power of the 
the ocean connected now in a way to the power of our brain it's, it felt quite nice to know that you know, even though sometimes it may feel that the my thinking you know um, is it ever going to calm down but then my thinking's nothing compared to the ocean and the ocean always calms down another thing I used to like to do I still do sometimes is and I've done this there's one particular time I did it uh, and it really it almost, I almost felt like it was I was being healed I was at college it's about 20 years ago and uh, anyway the, it, was, it was all getting a bit too much for me I was balancing working and uh, the course and practicing massage with people so it was a, it was a massage course a holistic therapy course well one day I just left the classroom I didn't walk out but it was break time and I just went for a walk and there was a park I didn't know there was a park there around the corner and it was a sunny day blue sky and I just laid down on the grass and the sun wasn't directly shining on me so I could look at the sky so I was looking at the blue sky and it felt like every every piece of tension was just being drained out of me It's almost as if the the grass was draining the stress out of my body and the blue sky was just sending deep relaxation into my body and it felt so nice so peaceful I let go of everything. And it gave me space to also realize that I needed to make some changes. Another time, I remember I was just going through quite a lot of stuff in my life. I remember I just, I think, seen two clients in a row when I was counselling. And I came into the kitchen area and there was these chairs. Because the building was about to move to another building. And I sat down in this chair it was a weird one it's really laid really laid back quite low like a deck chair and again all my stress just left my body completely I could feel my face my head my brain just relaxing completely And it felt so nice. It felt so calm. So peaceful. Well, that's a few memories of me relaxing deeply. Drifting deeply. We 
which brings me to the end of this recording. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.